Hi Pisces, welcome back to my channel. It's Krista here to do your general tarot forecast. So this is for the time period between March 1st and March 15th, and it's for Pisces Sun, Pisces Moon, and Pisces Rising Signs. What's in store for Pisces? First two weeks of March 2020. That's just for Pisces. Just for Pisces, March 1st, 15th, 2020. All right, folks, so we have a six card reading for you today. As always, I will be looking at bottom of the deck for general energy. You're probably already aware, but Pisces is in Mercury retrograde at the wow. Okay, so you have a lot of majors. Wow. Okay. As I was saying, you have, there's two fours, I'm gonna take them, wow. Um, what the heck was I saying, Pisces? Mercury retrograde Pisces, right, something's being revisited, something is on loop, something needs to be squared away. There are some major secrets, contracts, healing, strength of character, a new chapter in your life, very possibly. With the way that you express yourself in the world of the status quo, in the world of um, business, finance, um, growth potential, healing, um, food, restaurants, nurturing, anything having to do with protection. Um, but certainly there's, you know, 10th house, we're looking at how you are perceived in the status quo, how you work, and um, the word is escaping me. I don't know why. There is a very specific word that's associated with 10th house, and it's not status quo. It's basically, I can't remember, let's move on. <laughs> basically what I was trying to say there is that it's the way that other people um, accept you. It's, it's the way that you're accepted in the world of you know, outside the home, the business world. I'm going to leave it there. We had two fours at the bottom of the deck. We did, I was just looking at the four pentacles just for the heck of it. I looked underneath it. There was the four of wands. So I had to take that. You could be dealing with the matter of the home, right? So something having to do with the home here, where you live, home is where the heart is. Um, you're really settled and kind of happy here, but there's something that's sort of maybe too cozy. You feel like it's not moving anywhere. Maybe you might feel a little bit stuck. But you're in a, it's a really positive position to be in. It's not like you're, you're troubled or anything. Um, but you could feel like there's something more, there's something better. I do see this as available to you. I would say that you're, um, you could be doing some major power plays this month because of this um, Capricorn ruled Queen of Pentacles. Uh, there also is a great investment and money making potential if I haven't said that. And there could be returns on that. What you do for a living, what you do for others, how you are perceived by others in the business world or out in, in the world beyond the home uh, it could switch for you or you could want that to switch. So the card representing the situation is the Queen of Pentacles, right? So this is someone who's actually able to grow things. This is someone who's able to nurture and grow. This is very stable energy. It's very solid. It's practical. This person is very reliable or this energy. Um, Pisces, you could even have Capricorn in the first five planets of your own chart, or you could be dealing with a Capricorn. There is also, you know, Taurus, Aquarius. There is Libra energy here. Mm, there is moon energy here. So something having to do very possibly with, you know, something behind the scenes, something that you haven't revealed to others or that you're not aware of conceptually for yourself right now. Um, it looks like the reason for being this being the position that you're currently in or representing the current situation is the Hierophant. So vows and contracts, this could literally be a marriage um, or a very, you know, long-term relationship of some sort. Um, but once we're looking at the Hierophant, we're looking at, you know, this Taurus ruled 
vows and contracts. This is institutional ideology. Um, we do have the high priestess sitting underneath it. So this could be spiritual advancement for you, quite frankly, or you could be seeking or interested uh, in the occult or esoteric arts. Just throwing that out there as well. There is a lot of spiritual protection at this time. I would look to ancestors or ancestral energy or guidance at this time as well. It would be a really nice time for you to do that. Remember, something is on repeat, right? We're, we're sort of, and all of us, it's just, it's just cosmic at this point. But we're all sort of being called to revisit something so that we can finalize it. And I see very strongly, right, because the majority of Major Arcana here, this is a really big and important deal for you. This is something that um, could change everything. Even though something is stable, it's like something needs to turn over. Something, you need to address something once and for all here. So we do have the wedding rings over here. We do have the chalice here. Like what cup are you drinking from? What have you swallowed? What cool, you know, are you thinking straight? Is, is this something just being fed to you? Without any evidence, there is a potion over here. Is there something that, you know, you're not seeing clearly? There's some gems and, um, what like, quartz crystals. Um, we have this really strong second house possessions feeling, right? We're dealing with a lot of possessive energy around the home. Could be that something needs to switch up in the home that you can't put off any longer really um recent past energy here is the star so a lot of healing has to take place or had taken place very very recently around this issue this could be your health guys it could be the um your physical health the health of an actual physical garden um you could be a mother and it could be your mother or as a mother there is a health concern but it's finally turning over but the star is really talking about like a lot of spiritual protection, a lot of healing protection. You have the ability here or the opportunity to reach for your star, right? Where do you belong? Um, what is your calling? I know we're not dealing with the temperance, um, sorry, with the judgment card, which is the calling card, but I do consider all of these, you know, avenues that the stars take around her. There's usually eight of them. You know, there's a lot of opportunity here for you to reach for something greater than what is. And you are protected. We don't have any swords, so I really don't think like you're obsessing or worrying about any of this. I feel like maybe you just needed this to be a sign. Maybe you just needed a sign. If that's the case, you're ready to level up, guys. The card representing you here is the Wheel of Fortune. This is an opportunity that's going to be really in your face. It's going to be really obvious and run with it guys really really run with it even if you don't know oops even if you don't know what's next trust the moment trust your instincts trust that you can handle anything that comes your way trust that you're ready because the wheel of fortune is saying oh we got it this time around we can do this this time around so there's a lot of cosmic encouragement here for you as well i want to mention that the 10 um, being cycles, endings, and, and beginnings with the Wheel of Fortune have to do with fixed energy. So we're dealing with sort of cardinal energy here, moving out into a direction that you chose that's going to become permanent. So if this does have to do with a relationship, it can be about, you know, the solidifying a relationship or um, solidifying a home environment to your liking um, or suggesting here that healing needs to occur within here. And healing means... Again, whatever, as a general reading, whatever you need healed. So the card representing the near future is the High Priestess. And this is just not knowing. There's a lot of shadow work here. There's a lot of intuitive wisdom that is available here. But I do find front and center, whenever we see the High Priestess, there's secrets, right? And it's under the sort of vows and contracts, traditions, institutions. It's a very traditional energy, some things that's very set in stone. We're dealing with two very, very strong fixed energies here. And then we have, you know, strength. We have some cardinal energy and then Capricorn. So, you know, the direction that you're moving in is currently kind of up for grabs. Or you're being asked to maneuver a little bit in that. And maybe revealing a secret could be important to you at this time. But certainly going within, looking at the shadow self, looking at the sense of 
what lies beneath the surface. There could be some moon work, some menstrual work, some work having to do with femininity, females, um, uh, you know, uh, a sense of receptivity as opposed to constant action could be a major theme for you here as well. These are all really independent cards as well. I really feel strongly that this is something that you're going to need to sort out for yourself here, guys. And here is our probable outcomes, the strength. Um, we know because it's the number 11, but it is, you know, this Libra rule, right? Again, some more cardinal energy, but it, we're, we're dealing with Libra. We're dealing with seventh house. We're looking at partnerships and relationships, right? Contracts, commitments, traditions, institutions. So something having to do with, you know, the healing of a partnership or contract, something having to do with strength of character regarding this situation. Strength of character is very, very important to you at this time. Don't let yourself down here, guys. Um, it is the retrograde of what I consider, um, oh, geez, the word just escaped me. What the heck? Of, um, can't recall it, guys. Sorry. Um, wow. <laughs> Mercury and retrograde Pisces. Hi. <laughs> Escapism, wow. Uh, so yeah, it could be that this is, you know, cosmically speaking, we're no longer, you know, the, the Pisces among us are no longer able to escape something. We have to face something, but you're being given an opportunity here. So don't think it's all in your head. Don't think it's your imagination. Definitely something having to do with a small term investment around the home, how you feel about your home. How you feel about being stable and sturdy within your home. You could just need an adventure. Um, we did have that fool jump out at the very beginning, guys. I mean, just like extraordinary, potent, um, major arcana energy. You might have to do something alone. You might have to just take a major risk into the unknown. And that's okay. That's okay. You can intuit the rest of the way. And if you know yourself well enough, you won't be scared. We have builder energy here, guys. We have beaver. This is builder. What are you building? What do you plan on building? What are you creating? Um, where are you creating it? These guys are Canada's, I believe, they are the country's um, national symbol. Is this true? I think it is true. Um, these are incredibly tenacious critters guys and they literally build homes over miles like over <laughs> it across entire riverways um and they are built to last these are very solid family orientated animals so what are you building what would you like to be built what are you contributing to um something is being built to last here right so are you in it to win it are you in it to win it do you feel good about it um, can you feel good about it? So Pisces, I'm going to leave it there. I hope that you enjoyed the reading today and um, do check out your moon and rising sign videos for more information. And I hope that you'll join me in the next video for your sign as well. And until then, take excellent care of yourselves, guys. Bye for now.